Hi, it's Chris, and today I'm pretty excited. We're using ground penetrating radar to see if we can find fallen headstones or unmarked graves. Our cemetery was started in 1802, and in the old section, there's a lot of rows that are missing stones. So we're trying to figure out if someone's buried there or if a stone has fallen over. We also have a transient section where unknown people that died in the Erie Canal or on the town's highways were buried. Unfortunately, the record keeping was poor and we have no idea how many people are there. I contacted David Leslie, an archeologist, to use his GPR to see if we could solve some of these mysteries. My name is David Leslie. I'm a uh, senior archeologist and principal investigator at Heritage Consultants in Berlin, Connecticut. I'm also uh, the principal uh, archaeologist for Terra Search Geophysical, which is a geophysical consulting firm, and we do a lot of work with cemeteries. We're going to be using a GSSI utility scan pro. Looks kind of like a lawnmower, but it's pretty portable and easy to set up. All right, Dave has his GPR unit in here. He's going to explain it to us. So yeah, we have a uh, 350 megahertz antenna here, manufactured by Geophysical Survey Systems Incorporated, GSSI. Gives us pretty good coverage uh, in the lateral direction, uh, about uh, 75 centimeters to a meter, plus good coverage in depth. So uh, we get between uh, four to eight meters coverage in depth, so that's pretty good. Here for a cemetery, we're of course only very interested in stuff that's in the first three to five feet, so it's great for this kind of work. So the radar signal is firing as I move the unit, uh, and that is penetrating into the soil as it hits something that is an obstruction. That signal is lost. Uh, if it keeps going down, uh, it, it hits another obstruction, and then it bounces back. So it's the time delay that it takes the radar to leave the antenna and to bounce back off of obstructions. This uh, antenna is calibrated to the survey encoder wheel here. So as I move the unit, uh, we know that I'm moving uh, 10 centimeters, 15 centimeters, uh, and it fires uh, every, uh, it fires two radar signals every nanosecond as I move it. Um, so we're getting lots and lots of GPR coverage as we move the device, and we know in space where we are because of that encoder wheel. So this unit uh, runs on battery power, both the tablet that receives the data and the antenna itself. Uh, the antenna uh, battery can last for uh, about a day's worth of collecting. The tablet uh, often has to be charged uh, at least once during uh, data collection. We're going to set up several grid areas to do the scans in. We're going to focus on the old cemetery area here and this whole transient section. But this is where Dave's experience on how to set up the grids is very important because you want to make it easy to process the real huge amounts of data that you're going to get. Dave is setting up the coordinate system for the grid. Got the baseline here. We're 30 meters this direction and then 23 meters down to the other baseline. So we're gonna basically do about four to five transects in between each rows. That'll give us enough coverage so that we should be able to pick up if there are any intact grave shafts here uh, within each of these rows that correspond to headstones or are in areas where there are unmarked burials as well, or potentially any buried headstones. So that's a tight enough interval that when I stitch the data together, we should be able to figure some of that information out. We're gonna start collecting here and we start moving. Dave is uh, moving 50 centimeters at a time. He just sets the cone and then he aims for the other end here. So here where the red dashes are, we've marked where headstones are, and you can see these uh, intersecting and cut uh, parabolic features here, here. There's another one here that's a little bit off screen. Uh, those are likely the tops of uh, coffins and or burials within a grave shaft and the cuts in stratigraphy here and here uh, and one that's here uh, show the uh, grave shafts themselves. Up here on top, 
uh, we have the plow zone or topsoil before we get into the subsoil that's been disturbed uh, through the internment of uh, individuals. The data is always taken from one direction. That makes processing the data much easier, but it makes a lot more work to collect it. A high accuracy GPS measurement will be taken at each corner of the grid. David came back out with his drone and set up a flight path so he could take an overhead view of the cemetery in high resolution and use that to overlay the GPR results. Let's take a look at the data that David got. The first thing he does is he stitches all the GPR data together and then he lines it with the ortho photographs he got from the drone. These white areas are where the soil has been disturbed. Here he's laid out the areas that were roughly the size of coffins and he has to go look at each of these individually to get more information. You really need to be trained to read this GPR data in the cross sections. You're looking for shafts that are roughly two to three feet wide and that's these vertical lines. And then you're also looking for the tops of coffins down a meter or so and that's what these little uh, rounded shapes are. David has taken a lot of time to carefully go through each of these different areas and these um, are potential burial spots that he's identified and some are by existing graves which verify that we found something and then all the ones down here are in the sort of unknown transient section also over here. He also identified uh, potential headstones that had fallen over that's what these yellow marks are and then he found a really interesting part where he found a, a what he thinks is a burial pit over on this area here. So a lot of results after doing a lot of hard work since we've gotten the ground penetrating radar results, we found an old map of the B section. And if you look very carefully, you can see it's faded here, but it says transient ground. So indeed, the transient sections is much larger than we originally expected. David generated a great report summarizing the history of the area and the results that he found. And it turned out we, he, in the area that we surveyed, there were 98 potential graves four potential gravestones, and uh, maybe one mass uh, burial pit. Plus, we also verified the, the modern features like the road and the patio and things like that. We've been extremely impressed by David and his team and would definitely recommend him to do any other projects. We found the GPR to be extremely useful, and now we have a lot of work to do this next spring. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe. And have a great day.